Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network and Aeroscale, and welcome to another episode of Cracking the Box. The Burks? The Burks. <laughs> uh, this is a uh, Tamiya new kit, a 148 scale Kawasaki KI 61 ID, I want to say, or 1D Hein Tony. Um, not really an, an expert on these World War II Japanese planes. I know this is a late war plane that was kind of a um, kind of higher evolution of Japanese uh, uh, aircraft. Uh, obviously, it gets um, some cues off various different aircraft, uh, notably the under the under uh, air intake there, which is kind of like P-51-ish, I guess, and then it has kind of a straight back design, a little bit like the P-47s, which wasn't exactly new at that point, but but anyways, I don't want to get too much into the, the weeds on the history thing, because I am not an expert. I'm, I'm just kind of like remembering some things that I uh, either read or saw somewhere a long time ago. Um, so you can see this particular plane is in an interesting camo scheme, mostly just aircraft aluminum with some, some green sprayed on there, and then the red uh, tail section. Uh, I like these gold goldish parts here on the front and on the, on the nose uh, comb there. Um, the kit itself is kit number, uh, let me get the right number here, kit number 61115 and uh, looks like it's about 30,000 yen in terms of the pricing. And again this is um, 48th scale for Tamiya. So let's go ahead and open the box. This kit hasn't probably just been in release basically uh, and should be kind of out there for pre-order and stuff but uh, you may not be able to find it in some some retailers. All right, so right off the bat, we've got uh, this sprue, which uh, has the main fuselage, uh, prop, and lots of other bits, the uh, cockpit detail here. Uh, and then we have a small sprue here with looks like maybe some some engine bits uh, for the exposed thing. And then we have a clear fuselage option. Um, I'm pretty sure this is just to show off the aircraft, but we'll take a look at the instructions, see what they intend for that. Um, and then the wings, upper and lower uh, wing section here, uh, pilot figure you can see, um, the rear uh, horizontal stabilizers, and um, some interesting internal detail here with the, the wheel wells. Uh, what else do we have? We have a clear piece for the cockpit and some other small detail parts. We've got uh, a mask set that's included in this, uh, as well as decals, I'm sure. A couple different sets of decals. It looks like a main set here, and then I'm not sure what this one is, but we'll take a look at that. And uh, then we have a uh, an over kind of uh, detail, or me, mark, painting and marking guide, over overview, I wanted to say, um, which uh, looks like it goes this way. And it shows the paint scheme that's on the, the, uh, the cover of the box. And on the other side, looks like they have an alternate paint scheme. And uh, this one is Captain, uh, I'm not even going to try that name without my glasses on, Kobo, Koba, Kobagashi 244th Air Group, Kofu Air Base, Chofu, Chofu Air Base, February 1945. And the other one was, um, by the way, 2nd Lieutenant uh, Shurzo Takash Takashima, 244th Air Group, Kofu Chofu, whichever way you say, it, air base, in, uh, May of 1945. So obviously again, late late war, uh, pretty much right at the end there. Uh, the war did end in the war ended in wait the war ended in May in oh boy, stretching my memories here and my memory cells. The war ended in May for Europe. Did it actually go through? Um, it didn't last that much longer. I'm trying to remember when, when the end date was for for. For Japan, um, somebody will point it out in the, in the comment section, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't that much longer after that. So uh, we have a kind of a history background information bit here uh, on the plane, and uh, probably somewhere in there is the uh, the date that I'm looking for. <laughs> but the, the typing is very small. And then we have, of course, the instruction sheet, and uh, that is going to give us uh, the step-by-step -step instructions. So it looks like we've got the cockpit going together first, some foot pedals and stuff here, and inter interior detail. Uh, then we have the uh, pilot uh, with a paint scheme here indicated, uh, engine uh, compartment detail, uh, the internal fuselage going together. Um, I'm not sure where they show the, um, the optional part for the clear. 
but uh, maybe they just kind of assume you do one or the other. Um, and then uh, that going together, of course, with the the engine again. Oh, that wasn't uh, that wasn't engine detail. What was that? Hmm. Is that part of the, oh, I guess that was the main oh, was cockpit. So if you, that was the cockpit details over there. I'm not thinking it was the engine. Uh, so then you've got, again, got this exposed engine part here for the front of the fuselage. Um, uh, going together with uh, some of those under undercarriage uh, mounts here for, I guess, the... Yeah, I'm try, I guess they're trying to show... Um, trying to realize what, what detail, internal details they're trying to show. Because they are showing a lot of, like... Um, Kind of how it goes together stuff doesn't seem like it was necessary to replicate some of the details unless they're exposed in various small areas i suppose this looks that that way because it's actually molded in so this isn't a separate part it's actually molded in on the wing uh, which is nice um, we'll look at that just real quick um yeah so I'm gonna turn the reverse, turn the reverse side it definitely looks good oh some breaking news all right majority of voters believe they've achieved the american dream nice nice i always like that <laughs> Of course, they'll be complaining next month about something else. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, again, continuing on, we've got um, some of the uh, some of that uh, detail here with the underside air intake um, and uh, the external fuel cells, uh, landing gear. It's like a fairly one piece affair, um, except for of course the uh, the wing uh, undersides going on there. What do they call the part that when they have the you know the flat you know, the the wheel well, I mean wheel well, wheel well, no, not really called flaps. What do they call them on here? Attaching landing gear, fixation of, yeah, you know, okay. So, uh, oh wait, nope. Inside, nope. They don't say. Nope. <laughs> Negative. Uh, all right. So uh, they show the masks, I believe, in this section, showing how to use the the masks that are included. Um, and uh, basically finishing up the canopy details, the front prop going on, and then the final uh, detail here for the engine uh, and um, ammunition uh, gun uh, loading thing. I guess that's what that, that top section is there. Um, so that's good. That's all good. All right, so we'll go ahead and um, unbox here, uh, or unbox. We'll go ahead and uh, we've unbox. We'll go ahead and unwrap some of this stuff and then look at this under the, the camera a little closer. All right, well, let's take a closer look at the uh, fuselage and some of the other bits. Um, we've got uh, really nice panel line detail on this. I can tell you that, like, I'm not feeling any of this unless I kind of do this effect. I can feel it, but if I'm not really feeling it with my fingers. So that's a good indication that it's really, really light. Um, although with the visibly, with the eye, it is definitely uh, very um, fine. There is some small rivet detail there too, um, but I can't really see it. I'm gonna have to wait till I take the photos um, to get a better look at that. Um, got things like the you know the gun ejection ports here. They look nice. Well, not ejection. That would be for expend ammo. The the main gun ports. Uh, that's uh, where the, what those are. I think it internally collects all the uh, spent shells inside of it. Uh, and then again, we've got some nice detail on this piece here, which I believe is in the underside. I want to say. Um, so we've got uh, some of the guns here, uh, some of that detail, um, and then I believe this is the rear area for the uh, cockpit. I'm not sure what goes in there, but uh, there's something that goes right behind the, the pilot. Uh, we've got the landing gear um, covers, which again are nicely molded. There's even like a little angular part that's going down there. Uh, the uh, prop nose cone looks good. Prop looks good. Three connection points there. Uh, production quality on the plastic looks excellent. I mean, they did our 2016 mold, so this is definitely new tooling. Uh, not a lot of slide molding I'm seeing on these, but I just you know think it wasn't probably necessary. Uh, looks like there might be a little bit on some of these pieces um, the way they pull out. But uh, and uh, what's next? Let's take a look at this one, which has the main wings on it. Same thing in terms of panel line detail on this. I'm not really feeling anything. I feel a little bit here because there's a thicker line uh, indentation here. The way they've done the flaps, um, the flaps are, are uh, molded on the top and bottom of the this main piece, uh, as you can see here. Um, and then obviously they fit into the, the lower piece, so, so the flaps are just 
you know, basically showing up there. Uh, not a positionable flap system, obviously. I mean, you might be able to cut them out of there if you wanted to, but uh, but no, that's uh, that's that's fixed in place. Um, so again, it's a nice uh, pilot detail here with a separate head. Uh, I'm gonna have to again look at the photos to get a look at the face, but it's probably pretty good. Uh, little little details like the the rear wheel here. Boy, that is tiny, very very small. Uh, you know, again, one piece uh, rear stabilizers, uh, top and bottom, and uh, the separate um, vertical um, rudder here, or the, or the rudder, excuse me. Um, where was the rear? Um, oh, it's built into the fuselage, right? Yeah, okay, so you can see that you know fits in here, although I've got it upside down. Anyway, you can see it fits in like there, so, um, which is nice. And uh, landing gear, uh, um, have a nice little. Uh, oil spring effect there and uh, all in one piece of course and uh, fuel cells I like the way they've molded in the, uh, the wheel wells here so again they're not a separate piece they're just molded into the wing that is nice and this last bit of regular gray plastic we've got uh, some of that engine detail here and I believe I can see some kind of bolt uh, bolts around the upper uh, section here as well as on the sides uh, some kind of air-cooled uh, turbo unit here uh, some plumbing, various bits, and uh, then we've got the clear plastic or the smoky plastic uh, side fuselage, which I guess you'll have an option of doing a kit like that, even though they don't really show it in the instructions. But uh, but yeah, that uh, that piece is available, uh, and they do have some internal detail as well. So and then finally, the um, in terms of plastic, the clear, and again they do include masks for these, so uh, but it looks really good, They're very 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 clear very 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 transparent um, so yeah on, on this scale I think it's easier to deal with obviously than some of the, the other stuff and then finally the decals and those are going to be again the two different units um, so we've got uh, this one which is mostly um, small markings uh, various things around the aircraft as well so safety belts and some other issues some, some of the kill marks um, for the different schemes and uh, then on the larger piece here we've got the rising suns uh, with a different set of kill marks I assume which is for the other marking we've got this orange I believe underside part that's going to go near the, the landing gear um, and then stripes lots of lots of blue and red stripes with the um, lightning bolty looking thing here on the back and some Japanese uh, kan kanji uh, symbols uh, and some red lines, whatever those red lines are for. And then the masking piece, which we took a look at, but obviously that's very straightforward and so forth. So let's take a look at the photos, though, and uh, get some better close-up detail of the kit, and then we'll come back and conclude.
All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the photos of the uh, Tamiya Kawasaki KI-61 ID Hein in, uh, in 148 scale. This, again, is a new kit that should either just be kind of coming out right now or should be out in a month or so. Uh, you might have to put a pre-order in if you're looking to get it, but um, but it is going to be available like, through, probably through some of the Asian sellers, I would assume, first. Um, and uh, we'd like to thank Tamiya USC, obviously, for providing the kit. Um, I think it's going to fit a nice... Um, you know, niche for for uh, for Tamiya. I'm, I'm not sure they put out a previous a Tony before, but maybe this is an update or um, a new 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 for this scale. But uh, but yeah, it it looks like it's uh, got a lot of nice detail in it, and uh, is also you know not overly complex in terms of uh, too much uh, bits and pieces and so forth. So it should be widely accepted or able to be built by a range of modelers. Um, Please leave your comments, suggestions, questions below in the comments section, and uh, this kit will be available for a, a deep, more detailed uh, build review or build feature, and you can contact me at publisher at kitmaker.net if you're interested in doing something like that. Um, and we will see you next time on Cracking the Box. Yeah.